let's address the elephant in the room. It's much colder here than I expected. Okay, so my name is Olga. I'm originally from Russia, and I need to start every set like that because I know that they're listening. I am originally from Russia. I stand here completely in solidarity with Ukraine. I'm on Ukraine's side in the war. And controversial opinion, I don't think Vladimir Putin is a very nice man. I think all Russians are evil. I can say that, I am Russian. And all Russians are evil because the Russian language genuinely doesn't have a word for empathy. This is true. I was 17 years old when I found out about the concept of empathy. Can you imagine what that feels like for a person? I couldn't. <laughs> I did live in Russia until I was 14 years old. I lived in Russia with the most common Russian name, Olga. Olga is, of course, old Slavic for, I wish you were a boy. <laughs> My last name is K-O-C-H, right there. It's meant to be pronounced Koch, but if you're living in an English-speaking country. <laughs> Eight out of 10 times, it is Olga Koch. I ran for student government of my high school under the slogan, I want me some cock. <laughs> and I won. <laughs> also, I don't know if you guys know this, but in Eastern Europe, we don't have middle names, we have patronyms. So instead of another name, I have my father's name. So if you look into my passport, it literally says, Olga Alfred's cock. <laughs> so I never forget where I come from. <laughs> it's my dad's dick. When I was 14, I went to an American school where I got this accent, but crucially, I did not go to an American school in America. I was sent to an American school in England. Why? I have no idea. You don't question those things when you're 14. But American schools actually exist all over the world. There are some in Australia. American schools exist to provide uninterrupted education for children of American diplomats and American military personnel. Because the American parents can't bear the thought of their children taking even one geography class. So I've lived most of my life in the United Kingdom. I have a British passport. I am British, but people will not accept me as British because I sound the way that I do. Because of my accent, people just assume that I'm stupid. <laughs> but the one thing this accent is good for in England is having sex with all the dweeby British men I like to fuck. <laughs> because they get to have sex with a mean girl from a high school movie. Oh, go to prom with you, Jason, in your dreams. <laughs> Sorry, I got cum on you guys. <laughs> Front row is a bit of a splash zone. I do much prefer living in London than I did Moscow. London is a much more diverse place. I have all kinds of friends in London. I have white friends, I have black friends, I have male friends, I have female friends, I have gay friends, I have straight friends. I have friends who don't like to identify as friends. <laughs> all kinds of people. But I will tell you um, one story about what it's like to live with the name Olga uh, and try to pursue a career in show business, okay? So this was a few years ago. I had blonde hair at the time. It's kind of relevant. My name is Olga. We've established that. I have no theatrical training whatsoever, but obviously every intention of becoming a Hollywood star, okay? And with the name Olga and no theatrical training, the only kinds of auditions that I ever get sent out on are for Eastern European sex worker with a heart of gold. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against Eastern European sex workers with hearts of gold. They are my favorite kind of Eastern European sex worker. <laughs> the problem with these auditions is that they always want me to do a Russian accent. And I learned English with this accent, which means I end up having to fake a Russian accent by approximating one from the film Rocky <laughs> and defending even myself. <laughs> you owe me a lot of money, Dimitri. <laughs> it's not a great accent, okay? 
So one day, my agent calls me with uh, an audition for something he described as a standard post-coital scene. Um, not to brag, I do them all the time, okay? <laughs> I didn't even think twice about it. I showed up, it's the regular. I sit down, I look around the audition room, and I realize that every single woman in that room is the most beautiful woman I have ever seen in my life. And this is not gonna be one of those things where I'm like, oh my God, guys, I'm so ugly. Like, you have eyes, you'd fuck me. But every <laughs> single woman, eight feet tall, gorgeous, models. So I decide to retrace my steps. And I think, okay, uh, <laughs> every woman here is a model. The director of this film is extremely well known. I don't get the entire script. I only get one page of the script. I have to sign an NDA. I don't know what that is, but I think it's okay for me to talk about. <laughs> and finally, the only line that I have in the entire script is, thank you for a wonderful night, James. Bond. I was truly, genuinely auditioning to be a motherfucking Bond girl, okay? I walk in, the casting director visibly deflates. She looks like what James Bond would look like if I walked into a room, okay? And I sit down, and there are two voices in my head. And the first voice is obviously like, oh my God, Olga, you're a comedian. You wanna be self-deprecating. You wanna be self-aware. You wanna let the girls know that this is a mistake. And if you knew what this was, you wouldn't be here. But the second voice went, what? If. Like the same voice that tells you to shave your pussy before a One Direction concert. <laughs> what if? What if they go in another direction? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Long, long story short, I did not get to be a Bond girl, but they did let me audition for Housekeeper. <laughs> Dead Housekeeper. Um, and um, I don't think this is a spoiler for anybody, uh, because the movie came out like two years ago, but if you have seen it, you'll know that I wasn't hot enough to do that either. Thank you so much, goodbye. One more time for Olga Koch, everybody.